Hey guys, today I'm going to talk to you about how to find good creatives for your motivated seller uh, campaigns on Facebook. Uh, creatives basically just means the images that you use. So I'm not going to be covering videos. Uh, videos is kind of another topic, but um, just when you're looking just for images, uh, I've got the ads library, Facebook ads library open right here. And I'm just going to kind of go through some of the images that people are already using and kind of point out to you uh, my thoughts on them. Um, so basically, I was scrolling down. I, again, I just put in cash offer here in the search bar just to kind of look at some ads. Um, when you scroll through these, uh, let me just like, just commenting on this first one I have open here. This is kind of, uh, I, I kind of like this. They've uh, basically got five images of different homes and they've got a little a little bit of um, text here too. That's That's fine, but this is kind of what the approach that I generally take. So I generally try to find houses that look messed up like this one right here. This is a really good one, you know, that are local to the area. That's key. The houses, you know, you don't want houses that um, look like they're from New York when you're running a campaign in Phoenix, Arizona, for example, right? So the houses should look like there's, you know, local to the area or could be local to the area. And they want to be looking like they're kind of dilapidated and distressed, burned, broken apart, you know, walled up, whatever. Um, that gets people's attention, number one. And number two, it causes, uh, you know, people who think that the ad might be for like, you can buy the home, it kind of dissuades those people from jumping in on the lead form. Because sometimes you'll get window shoppers, people that are actually looking to buy. And when they see a house that looks, you know, it looks either nice or it doesn't look that rundown, they're like, oh, is this house for sale? They don't even read the ad, they just put their information in and then you end up getting some, you know, a lead that maybe you can't use if you're just a wholesaler. Um, if you're a realtor, that might be different, but so I kind of like that approach. Um, that's the first one I wanted to show you as we scroll down, like this one has a lot of images of uh, like a neighborhood with nice houses. I would avoid that just because, I mean, sometimes that does work. You can test it. Sometimes it works, but I would avoid it just because you, like I said, you'll get buyer leads coming through and people will get confused on what the ad actually is. doesn't matter what your copy is because they won't read it. They'll just look at the image and click through. I like to avoid stock images with this type of ad, unless it's a very specific reason why you're using the stock image. Um, and you'll see a lot of that as you scroll through here. There's a lot of these kind of stock images. Some of them, I mean, you know, stock image of money, stock image of, uh, you know, these people here. And I think some of these, some of these ads actually have like specific topics they're talking about. Maybe that's why they're using those images. But in general, like something like this, and move my face out of the way there, something like this, uh, Maybe you want to, you know, if you're just running a motivated seller campaign, I, I tend to avoid. Um, you scroll down here again, like these kind of for sale signs. Uh, I don't usually use images like that. Again, always test because you don't know what's going to work well in your market. If you are finding that they work well in the market that you're in, then use them. Um, you know, uh, was it? oh, again, like like the more creative you can be the more you can kind of stand out. Sometimes that really works well. So something like this, I thought was interesting, right? They got like the, um, these cool kind of, uh, comic graphics. These are pretty cool. Um, I don't know who made those or how they made them, but if you have the ability to do something like, like that, by all means, test it out. Um, cause it could work great. The whole point is standing out, becoming a scroll stopper to stop someone from scrolling on their screen. Now a place where I sometimes will just look for images and whatnot. Um, I'll go to something like Zillow. And I will literally just go into like a city, like here I have Colorado Springs brought up on the map, right? And I'll just under under this little thing under for sale, I'll just do auction foreclosures by owner. I won't be looking at new properties and I'll just scroll through and look for, you know, properties that I think um, look kind of uh, distressed or like, for example, this one, this is kind of odd, but it might work well in an ad. It You know, if you put this on your ad and said, we buy homes, any condition, whatever, you know, you have your offer on there and you have a picture of this, it might work because it's just so weird and goofy that, you know, it might stop people from scrolling and be like, what in the world is this? Um, so that's just an example, right? And on the other hand, you could run an ad and you could put an image. Let's see here. I mean, you could put an image of a home that just looks kind of basic like this and it might work just as well. Again, you have to test. And this is why um, in the last video I showed you to set your campaign up with dynamic creative because you can test 10 images at a time. Um, and these images, you know, will generally be better because they're not coming straight from realtors. And you don't want to use those anyways. So hope that that helps.